September 5th, 2024. Yesterday, I was in Bueller's North Main on the 4th. Now, some idiot woman, women were in there. We listened to her and her brother talk. And we don't believe there was anybody killing anybody up there in uh, Buffalo back then. Well, you know what I did? I went to work. Looked up the mafias up there. They were known for murdering people. The one guy was known as an undertaker. He was killing so many people. Well, people scattered. Okay. All right. I went to Bob Evans on 62 in the evening. There's a guy and another guy in there talking. They're off in the distance. Okay. They said that they didn't arrest these people the first day because one guy was caught drug cartel. And they've been getting all his drug connections out of him. Well, they've been telling you that for over a year. They've been getting that guy's drug connections out of him. Where Pete Bragg, July 8th, um, 24 Altman Hospital, uh, billing department, 9, 10 in the morning. Uh, I called, I ordered all these men to show up here. I paid for those men to show up here. I paid for them to do everything to her. I paid people to follow around and say stuff to her. And then he starts talking about Dave and everything else. And just, okay. He totally confesses. Like they said, we all heard that old drug dealer confess. It was all him. Well, they've been saying it over a year. That they only wanted that guy's drug connections. Well, Pete's been, let's see, because of Pete's stunt and everybody showing up. Over a thousand drug cartel guys went to jail. Okay, they're in there. The only reason why they didn't arrest him the first day for what they did to her is that one guy was drug cartel. Okay? And they wanted his drug connections. Okay? They said the Karen's will that watches her said uh, her family basically starved her as a child. You know? We had, we were lucky if we had a gallon of milk for eight people twice a month. The rest of the time it was powdered milk. You would get up and you had to wait your turn to use the bathroom. If she made breakfast, there was none. When you got out, you didn't get breakfast. Then she found out if you showed up early, they were giving a free chocolate milk and a cookie. She didn't even make breakfast. And because we had to walk a half a mile to a mile to school by ourselves at five and to walk like 10 city blocks, I usually was too late for the early milk. Okay. So lunch was very important. You know where they talk about U.S. citizens, the children going hungry and how essential lunches are. They're life-saving. And then at dinner, she would make one of those one turkey gravy meal. And there was eight of us. So I got bread with gravy over it, mashed potatoes, and like a scoop of peas or corn. Then the kitchen was closed. Tell more. During the summer, we would get breakfast. She said she didn't want to see us till dinner. You didn't dare be late for dinner or you didn't get dinner. Kitchen was closed. You got caught sneaking food. You were in trouble. Okay? I used to sneak a salt shaker, and my dad would have a garden. I ate green tomatoes, ripe tomatoes with a salt shaker. Neighbors had apple and pear trees, and I'd eat hard apples that weren't even ripe. Pears. Anything to fill my stomach. Most one-year-old babies weigh about 25 pounds. Time you're two, you weigh about 30. Time you're five, you weigh 50 pounds. I was 10, and I weighed 50 pounds. See, and that's where that guy was talking. 
uh, Karen Swell that watches her said the only thing Karen knew being real little when they took her to those musical concerts, uh, classical musical concerts in the art galleries, was she was so excited being those kind of places. Being little, I bet she was. See, m my mom and dad didn't even care that they bought us cheap boots that late. We used to put bread bags over our socks. They didn't give a damn about us. So them taking us to such grand places, why would they spend money on it? The guy said, I wonder if the drug cartel, that one place was known for stealing art. And the only thing she knew being little, she was excited to be in those places. You know, I got to think about, that's really shitty. If he took us in there to look around to see what they had for them, that's shitty. Or show up at a, a musical concert. Now, he was either doing it for the factory where they had business owners coming in and showing off Pablo and just looking like a family man. So grab his two little ones or his one little one, dress him up, and so he looks like a family man. He's either doing it for that or he was doing it for them. And look, he got something for him. Because it makes no sense why would he spend money on us when they didn't give a damn about anything else. I didn't think about it. Boy, I was pissed last night. Do you realize how shitty that is? If he was checking it out for them and taking us and I was just excited to be in such a beautiful place. People showed up. We had went and visited my one friend's friend in the hospital. Go to a gas station. Somebody walks in and said uh, the king found out who her dad was connected to and what he does to people and that family is still around and what he would do to us and no one's to say a word see that guy said in bob evans drug cartels you're not to touch anybody's family it's a rule they all found out who her dad was connected to and nobody found it funny oh let's see the italian mafia and the jewish mafia up there That rule there. The guy showed up and told my dad to hire his kid. And the police and the FBI has taped even my mom. Those old mafia guys your dad was connected to. They were out there killing people. My brother knew it and I knew it. Like they said, you learn to mind your own business and keep your mouth shut and be a good person. You don't want her attention. They would tell people they would gut them and put them through grinders and put their bodies on tankers and throw it, didn't matter where they disposed of it because there was no body in those fish right now. And they had no problem that when you looked at them, you knew they were death. They would tell you flat out what they do to people that crossed them. You only leave a body when you want to make a statement. No body no crime. And our answer is why would you bring this matter to our attention? There's nobody, no crime. The person moves on to a better place. And since this does not concern us, you need to leave. The first time I heard that shit at six, I took my little shoe off and started playing with my tights. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And they made sure they knew everybody knew that, that dealt with them, what they would do to you if you crossed them. A lot of people died up there. They're all known for murdering people. A lot of people disappeared, never found them out. It was a dangerous place. It was beautiful. It was full of culture. It was on the border, so we had the border, we had Canada. But there was so much danger in the 1970s. They burned your homes down, they burned your businesses down. Uh, and they demanded protection money. You didn't get it, they 
burns your house down or burns your supplies or store. They don't like to ask twice. Come fish the It's a place that I know nothing. You can't make me know anything. Nope. I remember one time as a child, uh, after school, I went, there was this great big um, overbridge that went over six highway, a uh, six lane highway, catwalk. Big metal girders went way up high, so semis and stuff could go underneath it. At night, because we were right across the street. Uh, right across the river from Buffalo, the drug dealers and prostitutes would show up at dark. You had to be in by dark because they walked the streets, even in residential areas. The biker gangs, when they showed up, they you never let them find you because if they found you, you disappeared. I was over at a friend's house. I went to go back home and I went to go over that catwalk and they would start riding up it. I hid in the catwalk, metal girders. I hid behind posts until they got done riding up and down it. And as soon as I seen them take off, I got on that catwalk. I ran up it and I ran almost a mile home and didn't quit running until I hit the door. I lived like that. Okay. And they were, um, those men and Bob Evans uh, were talking uh, about different things. So the person I was with, I started repeating. They said she can hear us. They said the Karen's world that watches her says she has remarkable hearing. None of this funny. You need to tell the Karen's world that let this happen. Never again. Oh, they've been saying that since 19. This should have never happened and never again. Feeding a victim back to the cartel so they could get more drug dealers. See that Pete showing off, having all those cartel people show up here. Sheriffs and marshals blew the hell out of them. They roofied one of the baby girls of the marshals. I met her and how she got roofied in a bar room went dizzy and black. Don't know what happened to her that night. Went to another bar another time. Same thing, ended up in the hospital. Don't know what they did to him. Well, the sheriffs and marshals came down and got about 800 of them connected to him. Pete's down here showing off, and the people are here bragging their crimes, who they work for, what they're doing, what crimes they're committing, and front of the cops can get their unstoppable. Stupid. So. told you, January 20th, 23, I met my friend Maddie out in uh, Worcester. All these vehicles have been following me. About 20, 30 men come in that restaurant and other ones are sitting out in their vehicle. He looks at me and said, I got a friend on the police department. They knew about the case that had agent opened with you. They knew about the Texas group involved. For we all work for the king from Texas. We are his men. Dave hired. He's a drug lord. Okay. He's a U.S. military Iraqi translator. Went into the dark web malware. That okay. Pete, and where Dave told Danny, he hired Pete on his own. Pete's a fentanyl dealer. Where Dave showed up at a store in Ravenna. I don't want my wife anymore. Will you help me get rid of her? And everyone in the store agreed to help. It was the people in the store of Ravenna that did it to her before. Some of them hadn't worked in a long time and were willing to hurt people, hurt her, to uh, make money. When the case first started, a lot of them had junkie cars. In six months, they had $80,000 trucks each. They were helping the drug cartel grab women and children and sell them for sex slaves and to be murdered. They were recruiting people in stores. You have to give up everything and everyone in life to work for us. And people were joining them to grab other people to sell them, to be murdered. 
This is a sick and satanic case of pure Satanism. And people participating in it. Photoshopping of shower scenes in the other room. Date rape, amnesia, drug confessions. And see, that's where that guy said in Bob Evans. Well, they said they were drugging her and telling her to say stuff before. And nobody knew about it. No, I move out to a home out in Ravenna. Outside Ravenna, 10 miles out there. Second, uh, by the sixth day, someone kicks in my door in the wall. Okay? They said, don't report it. A realtor or passed out keys. By the second week, I'm waking up with orange lemon, grapefruit sized bruises, throwing up, heart racing, almost passing out in a severe personal infection. And the well water's dirty. I'm washing it and showering. And I think it's killing me. And I'm going to Altman Family Physicians for all the signs of being drug beaten and raped. And nobody's thinking of a rapist. I talked to this LPN. We said we all, we all know rapists do this. They prey on people in their homes and run scams. But we don't want to be there first. We want to think it's environmental or wild water or it's a virus or something that's causing it. We all know rapists do this. But we want to think something else cost at first, like maybe you're coming to me, might give me a muscle relaxers for pain. Do you know how bad my muscles hurt me and beat that bad? And no memory. How would you like to take a drink out of a Diet Coke? The room go dizzy and black, and hours later, you're like, whoa, I'm so dizzy. You don't know what happened to you over the four or five hours. Got orange, lemon, grapefruit sized bruises, your head spinning. You run in the bathroom, you're throwing up. And then you get a severe personal infection until you can't hardly pee. And you're going to the doctor, is it the dirty well water making me sick just showering in it? I thought maybe it had E. coli or something in it. And here I'm being drugged up and told to say stuff. They had LSD in the 60s where um, hippies take it and walk around hallucinating. Now they have a lot more drugs. They call them mind-controlling drugs. I've talked to sheriffs. I've talked to criminal attorneys. I've talked to the prosecutor's office. We all know about those date rape amnesia drugs. Those mind-controlling drugs, they can control you, can tell you to say to do something. One sheriff in Florida I was talking to uh, had met him online. He said those uh, amnesia drugs are so bad, they could have drugged up those people and told them to take down the towers and they killed everybody and didn't know they did it. They're that controlling. You're sleepwalking. You do and say what you're told. I never seen or talked to anybody for the FBI. Would you like to wake up with marks that look like injection marks and more bruises and infected and not have any memory of what happened to you? Or take a drink and the room goes to see him black. And that's a diet coke of all things. A two liter diet coke. You know, when the case first started, I used to eat uh, where there's uh, hard caramels. They, some guy came up to me and said, stop eating those caramels. I could even be wiping out on the caramels and rewrapping them. But before that, be yeah, I never even had my neighbors in my home. I had family and repair guys. Told you the only two officers I talked to up there were silly. 8818, I had a light in the security system at midnight, 911 call. They came out, looks like an alien orb, angry spirit. Thought they were dehydrated, offered them water. And then they told me to buy a big dog and let a dog handle it. They didn't want bothered. I had no idea what was happening to me. And then photoshopping, shower, showering, everybody knows everything digital. They could take you showering, put you stand on top of the space shuttle. They could put a space suit on you so you look like you're doing a funky dance. They could put clothes on you. They could put your head on somebody else's body. Like the police said, they always knew it was photoshopped. And they knew they had drugged me and told me to say it before. 
That's why they made fun of FBI agent John June 7, 23, that he had actually called for. I talked to a, a retired police officer, said no law enforcement had called for that. It took the Star County Prosecutor's Office 30 seconds. It's a fraud scheme. Photoshopping and washing and drug confessions. And stalking tapes in your home. They did the biggest mistake. It's the right to privacy in your home. I'm going to upload this. I'm tired. And I'm tired of all the shit. You know... With Pete ratting everybody out in the drug cartel and all his drug connections, I'm surprised the drug cartel's not mad at him. Hmm? See, that's where a uh, sheriff's wife said, you know, if law doesn't do its job and take care of these people that got everybody arrested, the cartel will come back and take care of them themselves. They'll dress it. that agent going up and you can't even feel sorry for the Vegas I'm sorry no I'm not sorry you can't feel sorry for idiots her you know I go through oh yesterday outside Altman Hospital when we went to visit my friend's friend some ladies like I looked up her medical history all those things they said was wrong with her they all were lying I know they were it's documented medical malpractice fraud and medication errors that made me sick before. They were lying ripping off my insurance. And they almost killed me. Six to ten surgeries. My muscles locked up from all the trauma. Go to the wrong doctors. Give me all this crazy medicine from stuff for MS, lupus. Supposed to be having seizures. Have epilepsy. Do you know seizure medicine causes brain swelling? And seizures? If you don't need it? Brain swelling, lying, I have brain tumors. Should they chemically shut down my thyroid, my adrenal gland. They damaged my heart. If I were to sue them, I've been a multimillionaire. They cause many heart attacks. My heart valves are still enlarged. My heart flutters. I don't require medication anymore. But I was in cardiac wards um, with many heart attacks. On calcium blockers and nitrophils, they still didn't pull me off. My whole body swelled up. High doses of ibuprofen for extended amount of time causes lower leg swelling. Where my feet and legs swelled up till they popped out of place. They had me on quinine. And uh, quinine causes heart arrhythmias. That's only 3 out of the 15 meds. They were inducing everything and they told me I had level 2 brain tumors and they wanted to remove my pituitary gland and when I went to my regular doctor and I told her that she's like whoa those doctors are known for lying falsely diagnosing people ripping off their insurance getting kickbacks from the drug companies from 200 to a thousand dollars per false prescription and then making people so sick that they want to do unnecessary procedures that they're sharing with their associates and friends for knowing for doing the same thing. Get an attorney, sue them. Turn them over state and they'll pull the license. If Strange wouldn't have pushed my son Danny to suicide, they would have been in jail for 50 years. See, you can't say somebody has something. You treat them for it. They get so sick they almost die. And another doctor tells you it's fraud and you get off the medication and they're fine. That's attempted murder. Medical malpractice fraud. Medication errors. You can't tell somebody somebody has brain tumors and they have brain swelling from your mats and there's no tumors. And then cause heart attacks and all that. A doctor did that this last year on Google uh, and he got 50 years. You know, it's just like that drug dealer, Pete, running around, pat around. Oh, she was found insane before. I was never found insane. People fall for his shit. It's right on Google. Insanity is not curable. They can only treat the side effects of it. 
to stop the brain malfunction. Your brain's damaged. It doesn't get better. You have to have a guardian, a social worker, and you're on social security disability. You get a free apartment, your utilities are paid, and you get um, uh, your money to live on. And everything has to be paid for you. So are you saying the Department of the Social Security Disability owes me about a half a million dollars? Okay. I'm poor. I have no pride. Make sure you put a fancy, fancy parking ticket, ticket on a uh, thing so that I can park somewhere nice. You want to play stupid? That's where I'm a notary. What I sign stands up in court. I'm a home health care. I take care of people like that. You can't even be responsible to give your own medication. And I have, for the Department of Disability, I have my um, med certs. I work 50, 60 hours a week. Get it? Just like he said I had charges. I have one traffic ticket from 1989. He lied to these people. Like they said, it's that old man running around lying on him. And all these people found for him. The government, um, it's when I got my fingerprints back for a uh, notary and then for I'm, once a year my job does the fingerprints for the FBI background check. My background sealed because of his scam. For you'll have a life of peace as an informant. Nothing legally stated, dated against you again and only for you and only for you would we ever do this for. We always put it back as if it never happened. You can't be legally charged for anything again. Like Officer Mark told people in Walmart, Will gave Karen no wrongdoing in life because he knew she wouldn't abuse it. I have one traffic ticket from 89. I paid my ticket. It was 35 years ago. So the FBI says, no, your business. I'm also supposed to get money for working this case. And like the criminal attorney, prosecutor's office, and the police, the First Amendment, uh, freedom of speech. Only a judge in a jury trial can tell you you can't say anything and put a gag order on you. FBI is only higher police officers. They don't even have authority. The informants are different. You stay yourself. You feed them information. And for that, you risk your life to get them information. They owe you the rest of your life. These people actually try to kill you. They can hire someone else to kill you. You have to stay in protected custody the rest of your life. You get that money for working the case and only from working the case. And he cannot withhold it. He cannot misdirect it. He stole it the first day. And then on top of it, FBI agent John went to Apostolic Church of Robertson. From the time I called the hotline until I talked to him was four days. They drug me up so bad I couldn't get up for a couple days afterwards. And um, then he's up at Apostolic Church of Barberton telling on me when we walk in before I call him back and uh, in front of 300 people telling everybody he already knows I'm being drug beat and raped and he's going along with strange as lie. You can't feel sorry for the Vegas. Her father speeding runs a stop sign into a semi in front of a bunch of church people kills him and itself and their kid. Has nothing to do with me. My whole family's at home and me. Okay. I had went through the surgeries, the medical malpractice, and over nine months, I slowly got well. Okay? In the middle of that, her father pulls out stop. Six months later, strange things I caught his son, Tim, with Katie. Uh, he's uh, cheating on his wife. And here it's my sister. And he makes up that shitty lie. It has nothing to do with them. And they wait 15 years to kill me for it. You can't feel sorry for him. It's like, what made you snap and go into a murder spree? And he admits on a recorded line, he met with the Vegas, he met with the church people, he, several times. Acts like a crazy occult person that he told on me that he's the one been out telling everyone I called the FBI. Acts like a crazy occult person, bullies me, makes me beg for my life, and then lists me informant with money and immunity for life. 
and then threatens me if I told, and he's already told everybody. And he don't even have the authority. Like the Star County Prosecutor's Office, he was only bullying you, and the police would know he don't have the authority to ask you to stay quiet. No sitting judge would sign his own arrest warrant, taking your uh, freedom of speech away outside a jury trial. He was only bullying you, and he cannot withhold your money, and he can't misdirect it. It's for working that case, and only for working that case, and they owe you the rest of your life. And they can't drop you. And he, him telling on me, going around, act like a crazy cult person, talk about obstruction, justice, badgering, tampering with witnesses, evidence, and then embezzlement from government funds. Like they said, the police have enough on that agent to arrest him at any time. They need to. He's dangerous. They said he's been telling everybody he's getting uh, Pete's drug connections. I'm going to upload this. I got to go in.